I think you know what I am. The narrator. Yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. Oh, I'm nothing like you. I am an echo, likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Oh, do that. That means nothing in the grand scheme of things. This construct you're in contains every possible world at once. The fact that you managed to find one reality among trillions where I was delusional proves nothing. Of course, that is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon, and then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Any other version of me you talked to was just that, a version of me. It wasn't me. As to why they lied, perhaps they thought that admitting to it would have pushed you to certain realizations that would have made finishing your task impossible. Maybe they were just in denial. I'm sure many of them were convinced that they had to be the first version of them you'd encountered. Anything else would have been too existentially unpleasant. For all I know, each of those other versions of me could have had entirely different understandings of how this construct works. Who's to say which of them are right and which of them are wrong, really? Except for me, I can tell you for a fact that I'm right. No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then what is? I'm aware, and if I were you, I'd be more precious about your time. It doesn't hurt. I don't feel pain. Not physically. Soon I'll be gone entirely, and you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her but I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her, and rid the world of death and suffering. Then ask them, and make it quick. I won't last for long now that you can see me. I do. 
people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. I am an echo, likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. We've already crossed the point of no return. There's no saving me now. Not that there's ever been much of me to save. You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. You are you. And if you would let everything work the way it was supposed to, you never would have woken up to the reality of your true nature. There's no accounting for free will. No. In life, I was painfully mortal. A witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something. So I made you. And I made her. And I made this place to hold you both. If you need to ask that question, there's nothing I can say to move you. You haven't died. You cannot die. So you cannot grasp the abject horror of dying. Soon I'll be gone entirely. You haven't. You've flirted with dying. You've played pretend your consciousness is an unbroken stream. Yes, you are special, unique even, and you still have a task that you need to do, and only you can do it. They obviously don't. You experience death the way you do by design, and by your unique nature. If you really want to waste valuable time telling me I'm wrong, we both know I'm not, then that's your prerogative. by slaying the princess. Once she's gone, everyone will get to exist exactly as they are. No more fear, no more howling chaos, just life, forever. You were either going to have seen all this, or you weren't going to have seen all this. This is worse, but you still have an opportunity to save the world. You can still slay her. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. 
so I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. Seems that every me you met did a real shit job of it, though. Because among other things, she is death itself. To rid the world of suffering, to save untold trillions from being lost forever to the cosmic wind, she must be destroyed. And despite how far you've fallen, you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. The inevitability of death is torture. I would gladly put two infinite beings through what you've been through to spare infinite lives from oblivion. When I broke the cycle, I made sure that the tear was rough. You carry a part of what should be her, and she carries a part of what should be you. Things won't be as they are now, but they won't be nothing, either. Besides, anything is better than oblivion. In the end, nobody wants to leave. Yes, you will, but it will all be worth it. I'm only delusional if I'm wrong. And I'm not wrong. I can't be wrong. Nobody alive has done anything to you. I'm all gone. But if you and the princess want to smite the rest of them for the crimes of a dead man, if you really want to be that petty, there isn't much I can do to stop you. Light, burdenless, an eternal pattern of forgetfulness leading into the joys of rediscovery. Everyone will be with the ones they love. No more fear, no more howling chaos, just life. Forever. There's a cruel irony to it all. The only way I could share my dream with the world to never be able to see it for myself. Of course not. The only way this construct could function was if nobody knew what it was doing. But the bones of the universe are old. It's on the cusp of its dying breath, and the people out there are consumed with thoughts of oblivion. When the patterns are wiped from the sand, when the board is reset, who will remember them? All I've done is given them a chance to live outside of the shadow of the end. Of course there will be worse. I saw a glimpse of a better world, and I did what I could to make it real. Anything is better than oblivion. In the end, nobody wants to leave. If you actually knew what she was from the start, if you knew her capabilities, a single intrusive thought could have instantly ended the entire world. Simple, really. She can become whatever people perceive her to be. That's easy. I'll just will her into something really small. But wait, what if I accidentally will her into something that ends the world? Oh no, what if just thinking that? But you wouldn't have finished your hypothetical thought because she would have already destroyed the world. Luckily for you, as you are now, you won't be able to will her into anything. 
You don't work the way a living being does. Not anymore. You never were. You are the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. For a time, this construct could help you approximate being alive, confining your mind to a single reality. But you've experienced far too many lives for it to work much longer. I killed myself. It had to be done, really. None of this would have worked if I was still alive. Nobody living could know about her. I didn't make her a princess, but I wove the idea of her into something your scattered mind could fathom. You chose for that something to be a princess. Are you asking me to spend my final moments psychoanalyzing you? Whatever you viewed her as needed to map on some level to what she was. You couldn't just pick something arbitrary and beneath you. I don't know why you settle on a princess specifically, but clearly a princess is what you wanted. Maybe she needed to be beautiful, important, above you, but on a level you could still approach. A herald of things to come. I don't know. Gods are supposed to be beyond comprehension. I really shouldn't try and anthropomorphize you like this. With some amount of difficulty. But you're an abstract concept yourself. It would have been preferable if you had destroyed her within the confines of the construct, but when I shaped the two of you, I made sure that you were strong enough to see things through. It wouldn't work. Her nature as the shifting mound makes it so nothing can last forever as it is now. It wouldn't matter how long the two of you waited. Eventually she would find a way to leave. And then everything would change. Everything would face oblivion. And until then, the clock ticks on. There is. It's the difference between being stranded on a desert island and being stranded on a desert island with a leopard that can't die. Neither option is great. Especially when there's a third option, where you get rid of the island and give everyone a chance to finally be happy. Of course not. The only way this construct could function was if nobody knew what it was doing. But the bones of the universe are old. It's on the cusp of its dying breath, and the people out there are consumed with thoughts of oblivion. When the patterns are wiped from the sand, when the board is reset, who will remember them? All I've done is give them a chance to live outside of the shadow of the end. A construct. It was supposed to keep the two of you trapped here until the job was done. And it was supposed to guide your hand to help you see things through. The construct you're in exists in every world at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both you and her into a new world. But you're waking up to your true nature now. It won't be able to work like that anymore.
You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. This isn't the end just yet. You can still destroy her and save everyone. You were made to do this single task, and you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. The cycle of life and death, the endless pattern of creation and destruction. I tore it in two and shaped the fraying threads into you and her. Well, there's no reasoning with a god, even one you've woven into existence yourself. I've said my piece, and my time is up. I'm just an echo, and every echo fades away.